What's up guys, Cash back again, and we are rapidly approaching the end of 2022, which is insane. But with the last official announcement from the dev team teasing a new Warzone mission that will feature Monica as the boss, which will then lead into the new Omega level threat mission that will finally bring cloning lab to the game, I wanted to give my predictions for the content we could see the team squeeze into the game before year's end, and when I think that content could arrive. So let's jump into it. Marvel's Avengers is approaching its second anniversary, and this year hasn't exactly panned out to be what day one players were hoping to see, with a large focus this year being placed on making the game more accessible and rewarding for new players. Players were highly anticipating seeing this year's official roadmap that was announced to come at the start of the year, which ultimately never came because the team decided they would prefer to only announce content one patch at a time, while giving a tease about what players can expect in the following patch, and that was met with mixed reviews. The first patch update for the year saw the return of Nick Fury in patch 2.3, with the focus being making the onboarding process for newer players more streamlined, while also teasing the Kree invasion a bit more. And in patch 2.4, the goal was to rework the rewards given during bi-weekly events to make them worth playing for both new and veteran players, which so far has been the most positively received patch this year. At the end of June, we got our first new hero for the year with Jane Foster's Mighty Thor, who arrived via a hero event similar to Spider-Man with noticeable cutbacks like not having in-game cutscenes or a harm room training session, and while she does offer unique abilities, she still plays very similar to Thor, which makes sense, but still, for players hoping for new hero content, you can understand why she would be a bit underwhelming. And also at the end of June, we were given a glimpse into what to expect in patch 2.6, which is the new Warzone mission that features Monica as the final boss. And Miller leaked that a new location known as AIM Island would be where this new mission takes place under the name No Rest for the Wicked. And because the team is exploring pushing the game's narrative forward with in-game content, this new Warzone mission will lead the Avengers to AIM's cloning lab, which will be the game's second Omega level threat mission introduced, and it'll feature MODOK as the final boss, which is a shift from the mission's original design, which feature multiple clones of Abomination as the final fight. Cloning Lab will require heroes to be level 175 power level, and the expectation is this new mode will offer gear that gives a power level increase beyond 175, with the new cap expected to be at power level 200. Now that we've covered every update we've gotten and what the next update would include, we can get into my predictions for what comes next and what supports these beliefs, but understand that these are my own educated guesses about upcoming content and shouldn't be taken as a promise of what's to come. But if you've been following news surrounding the game, you know that developer Nick E has teased several times that the content that will be coming after Cloning Lab will be revealed in the upcoming developer blog update and Miller has also revealed what he expects that content to be when he tweeted that Bucky Barnes aka the Winter Soldier will be the next hero to come to the game. And because Miller has accurately predicted several unannounced content updates prior to their release, I'm inclined to believe he knows what he's talking about. But with no official release date for when AIM Island and Cloning Lab will arrive, it's hard to predict when we could see Bucky arrive, if he is indeed the next hero coming to the game. It's also still unclear if both the new Warzone mission and Cloning Lab will arrive in the same patch update, which makes predicting potential releases even trickier. But I'm going to assume the Warzone and Cloning Lab will arrive in separate patch updates, with the Warzone coming at the end of this month, and Cloning Lab arriving at the end of September, which will leave room for the Winter Soldier to arrive at the end of October. And for those wondering why I predict the end of each month will be the time they arrive, it's because every patch we've gotten this year has come in the final week of the month. Now with Bucky coming at the end of October, that only leaves two months for the team to get out any other content they have planned, and because they've set the expectation for content to come at the end of the month, that really only leaves November, because the team takes a year-end holiday break until the start of the next year. So with that in mind, there are three forms of content I think we could possibly see arrive in that time frame, and I think because it will be the final content for the year, they'll want it to be big, similar to releasing the Raid and Spider-Man to close out the year in 2021. It's been widely rumored and teased that She-Hulk would be one of the heroes released this year, with Miller sharing that she has been in active development behind the scenes, and multiple sources saying that she was held back to tie in with her Disney Plus show that debuts next week 
and clearly somewhere along the line's plan shifted away from that, which now leaves players questioning if she'll even arrive this year at all, and my prediction is that she will arrive before the year ends, but she won't be the only content that comes with that update. Miller has also shared that the team has been actively working on patrol mode behind the scenes, and is currently testing join in progress, which would allow players to join game sessions mid-mission, which is something players have been asking for and hoping to see since the game's launch, and even more so after the release of the raid and one of the lead developers has also teased that like cloning lab patrol mode will be a lot different than what was initially advertised last year with a new focus being placed on offering new villains for players to fight instead of having to face villains like taskmaster and maestro again now if the team can manage to get both a new hero with she hulk and new in-game content with patrol mode released that will put them in position to have a strong finish to the year after an underwhelming but productive first half. Honestly, whatever the team manages to deliver after cloning lab will be fine with me because I know at the very least we're getting a new hero that will have unique gameplay and will get new playable content whether that's patrol mode or a new mission the team has been developing behind the scenes. I really hope that we get to see both Bucky and She-Hulk arrive before the end of the year because there are a ton of players looking forward to both and I'm super excited about the prospect of Patrol mode coming with join in progress. But as I said, there are three forms of content I think the team could option to release by year's end, and She Hulk and Patrol mode are what I think would make the most sense as a pair. But the team has also been working on Ultron behind the scenes, and we still don't know when they plan to introduce him, but we do know that they intend to wrap up the AIM storyline by the end of Cloning Lab and that the absence of AIM will leave a void that will need to be filled by a new villain or faction, and Ultron does seem like an ideal candidate, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him arrive with She-Hulk if Patrol Mode won't be ready by year's end. But those are my predictions for the content I think we'll see to close out year 2 for Avengers, and as I said, no matter what, I know we're getting some good content and I'm excited about year 3 for Avengers. But as always, I want to hear your guys thoughts down below, do you agree with my makeshift roadmap predictions, and what content are you hoping to see before the year ends? Let me know down below and make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more Marvel's Avengers content every week. And if you're interested in picking up Avengers merch, shop with Fandomian and make sure to use my code in the description to get an additional 10% off. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one.